Hi, I'm Andrea and welcome to Vermilion Lane. Today we're going to be making asparagus, goat cheese, and pine nut pasta. It's really delicious, very light, but at the same time really filling. I'm going to use a whole grain linguine, but you can use just about any pasta that you like. Ordichetti would be really pretty in this dish, as well as fettuccine or even spaghetti, just whatever you have on hand. So I know that we all kid about getting cute and being fabulous in 2015, but it really is a commitment that I plan to keep this time around. I always make the same New Year's resolution. I'm going to be a little bit more healthy. I'm going to feed my family a little bit more healthy way. And I do a pretty good job of it, but I know that I can do better. And in 2015, this year, it is going down. It is going to happen. <laughs> I am committed. So I hope you'll join me on this journey. So as I mentioned, you're going to use whole grain pasta if you can get it and if you like it. I'm going to use linguine today. Um, you're also going to use asparagus, of course, and I'm going to teach you a little bit of a trick here. Um, I've cut my asparagus into one inch pieces, but before I do that, I find a natural break in the asparagus so that I know what part is a little too tough you know, to put in the dish. So all you have to do is just bend it slightly and it will break on its own. Now, if it keeps bending, you know that you've got some really old asparagus. And uh, if you're in the grocery store, I really recommend that you just take one of the stalks out and just bend it a bit. If it's super flexible, then you know that it's old asparagus. If not, there's gonna be a natural breaking point and that's your part that's a little bit too tough to eat and you wanna discard it. So, from this you're gonna be able to get three to four inches of uh, you know asparagus uh, cuts. And so that's what you wanna do. You wanna cut your asparagus into one inch pieces. Now, the pieces that have the very um, top of them, the, where the, the florette, so to speak, I don't know, perhaps flower, I don't know what you call it, but the tip of the asparagus, how about that? Um, you're gonna make that piece about an inch and a half. So let me show you the difference here. An inch for the stem, and then an inch and a half for the tip. And the reason you wanna do this is the tip is a little bit more tender and the tip is gonna cook faster. So I find that if I have a longer piece on the tip, then all, everything cooks evenly. So that's just something to keep in mind. I can't stand soft tips. I like for my asparagus to still have a little bit of bite in the middle, just al dente, almost like pasta. So um, just keep that in mind if you're like me and you don't want any soggy pieces. So we're gonna do pine nuts, incredibly good and good for you, and we're gonna be toasting those today. And when you toast them, keep in mind they're gonna go in a 350 degree oven and we are talking about five minutes or less. Don't push it because <laughs> pine nuts are expensive and I don't want you to have to toss them out because they got burned in your oven. So please keep that in mind. If you can smell them, they're already burnt. So just uh, five minutes to just toast them off. We're going to use um, shallots today, and I like shallots in this dish because the ingredients are all, you know, kind of kind of light, and I think that onion is a little overpowering, so the shallot, which is a type of onion, uh, I find that that's just a little softer note of that onion flavor, flavor, and I really, really like it. And the way we're going to cook it, I hope you like that too. It's going to be sliced super thinly, and then it's going to go into a little olive oil, so they'll crisp up a bit. Really just scrumptious. If you haven't seen a shallot before, this is what it's going to look like in your grocery store, uh, skin on. And you're going to peel that off until you get these uh, pieces. And then, of course, um, once you've got all the peel off, then you're going to slice it up super thinly, and it's going to be oh so good. Of course, garlic, because if you've cooked with me before, you know I put garlic in just about everything except my desserts. And one time I made a garlic cake, but I got to tell you, it was an accident. I wanted to make a cake. It was like just a yellow cake. It was actually a box cake, so it wasn't even like fabulous or anything. But my in-laws were coming over, and I always like to have like something really that at least looks lovely for my in-laws, even if it's not super duper fancy, because like I mentioned, it was a box cake. And I thought, you know what I'll do so that it doesn't taste like super, you know, boxy? Um, I'll put a little ginger in it, a little lemon, a little this, a little that. And so I'm just, ooh, I'm just like, ooh, doing my thing. And I just know this is going to be the most delicious cake ever. So I don't have fresh ginger. So a little powdered ginger goes in. No big deal, right? Okay, so it was powdered garlic. And my in-laws let me know it. No, seriously, they were super nice about it. But we all had garlic cake and we just had a good laugh over it. But it was really funny because 
I iced it. I did everything. I had no idea that I had put the garlic powder in there instead of the uh, ginger powder. So it wasn't until we're all together with this delicious lemon glaze that I had made from scratch over top. And uh, we all take like that first bite and you're like, hmm, that's an interesting note in the background. And then we take like a second bite and the kids are scarfing it down because they're not even tasting it. They're just eating it. And, um, but the adults were all like, eh, it's not even quite right about cake. So anyway, it was garlic. Long story. So today we're going to be using garlic and it's going to taste good. So also tarragon, and I'm going to be using fresh tarragon today. You can go, of course, with um, dried tarragon, but make sure you just use a pinch because tarragon can be rather overpowering um, when you use dried tarragon. I find that. Um, tarragon has, if you haven't used it before, a slightly anise taste to it, uh, like a licorice type of taste. And I find in the background of this dish, it's really lovely. Um, if you can't find it or you prefer not to use it, just go for a little fresh oregano or um, fresh basil would be really lovely. Um, just keep in mind that you want to just chiffonade, just a nice quick um, chop across with a very sharp knife so that you don't get brown edges. And then you just want to toss it in the pasta after you finish the entire dish so again your uh, fresh herbs don't brown on you. And we're always going to be using just a little pinch of uh, red pepper as well in this dish. So, la la la, one of my favorite things, goat cheese. I love goat cheese. And I love the way that in this, di this dish, the goat cheese just kind of melts into the pasta and it's so good. Goat cheese, I'm telling you, if you don't use it, you're going to start <laughs> after you try this dish because it is so, so good. It's really creamy and earthy and like I said, really good. And we're only gonna um, have four ounces in the dish. And one of the things that I wanna let you know, as far as tips go, is freeze your goat cheese. Now don't freeze it all the way through. Just about, I'd say a half an hour, an hour before you're gonna start cooking this dish, go ahead and put your goat cheese in the freezer. And then it's gonna be a lot easier to cut for you after the fact. What you're gonna to wanna to do, it, okay, we'll get to that part later. Oh my gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But just remember to um, pop that goat cheese in the freezer for a little bit. We're gonna be using wine, and this is a wine that my lovely next door neighbor, she's like the sweetest lady ever, um, bought us. And we're not big wine drinkers, so we're gonna enjoy the bottle of wine, but I'm gonna use a cup of it in this dish, and then there's gonna be just enough for my husband and I to enjoy with dinner, and maybe even a glass when the kids go to bed. We'll see how it goes. So, of course, parsley, nice fresh parsley here, and that's it. Oh, salt and pepper. In every single dish, if you don't see it pictured, just know that salt and pepper is gonna be in my dish. And um, kosher salt, I prefer, not so salty salty. And uh, fresh ground black pepper. Another thing that of course you're going to need is olive oil. Now there's an option to use a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of butter at the very end of this dish, just to really round out um, the, uh, the sauce and to give it some real lusciousness. If you don't want to use it, and in 2015 you're going to be a little bit more svelte than Andrea, I understand. You can totally leave it out. It'll be just as lovely. So let's get started. I've talked so much. All right, here we go. So it's time to get going on our shallots. We're just going to slice them into rings. I don't want to cut them up any more than that because I'm one of those people, I like to know what I'm eating. I like to see uh, every bit of uh, ingredients that are in my dish. I just think it makes it more beautiful, more appealing to the eye. So I've got a tablespoon and a half of olive oil on medium, medium high. And I'm going to spread out my shallots. Of course, being super careful here. I'm adding in my garlic, crushed red pepper flakes, freshly ground black pepper, and kosher salt to my shallots here. Then goes in my asparagus. Now that our asparagus is in, we're going to turn our heat up to high. Give them another quick stir. And then we're coming in with our one cup of white wine.
That's going to deglaze the pan, get any little brown bits up, and it's going to be oh so scrumptious. And we want our heat on high now because we want that wine to come to a boil, get some of that harsh wine taste out, and just leave us with a nice mellow, dry white wine flavor. And my asparagus are cooked through but not mushy at this point, just like I like them. And now it's time to come in with that two tablespoons of butter. That's going to do two things. It's going to add a really luscious sauce to what we've got left over of our reduced wine. And it's going to bind everything together beautifully and coat our pasta. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so, so good. So you want to taste this, of course, for uh, salt and pepper. I love that my asparagus is still a really beautiful bright green. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Super crisp. I have to bend down because my, <laughs> my hubby, aka the videographer, is not here right now. So I have to bend down because <laughs> my camera is stationary. But it's really super good. But I need salt and pepper for sure. I'm going to pop that in, finish up my pasta, and I'll be right back. So this dish is going to generously serve about three or four adults. Obviously, just cut it in half if you're cooking just for yourself or you and just one other person. As soon as you get your pound of pasta in, you want to immediately begin stirring. A lot of times people like to put olive oil in their pasta. That is a no-no. <laughs> you don't need to do that. The only reason that your pasta is sticking, if you find that that's a problem, is because you're not stirring it immediately. So I like to take my asparagus mixture and just pour it right into my pasta, which I've put into a nice large bowl. And that way I'm going to be able to get everything mixed and incorporated really nicely. So my asparagus is still super green. So beautiful. And my butter and shallots, and crushed red pepper and garlic, everything. I can just smell it all. It smells so good. So I'm going to give all of this a really nice toss, just like I would a salad. We're going to go in with our parsley and tarragon, then our toasted pine nuts, and now for the ultimate. Ah, it's time for the goat cheese. So there are a couple of things that you can add to this dish. Tonight I'm going to be crumbling a bit of turkey bacon from this morning over top just to add a little bit of protein for the kids. I'm going to have it along with my husband just as is and it's really delicious that way. Another thing you can do is shave a little Parmesan cheese on top. Um, you can even use that in place of the goat cheese if you prefer um, or use feta even. As far as protein is concerned you can also add panko coated chicken or grilled chicken as well as really lean um, beef. Uh, just think about uh, if you've had a steak uh, the night before and you're looking for something different to do with it, you can just slice it thinly and uh, place it on top. using a whole wheat lingreen. Dagnabbit! I almost had it. You can also add like grilled chicken or panko crust. Um, <laughs> so I like to take my artichoke, mm, artichokes, we ain't eating artichokes, what are we talking about? Hello! And remember to like this video as well as subscribe and look on Vermilion Lane every Tuesday. Of course, look as often as you like, but every Tuesday you're going to get a new craft or a new recipe. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.